Question 8. So we have one amino acid, serine, and it uh, exists as two isomers, so isomer P and isomer Q. And uh, these two isomers, they are optical isomer okay, uh, because uh, they are actually the mirror image. They are mirror images that are non superimposable because uh, this is a chirocarbon. So this is a chirocarbon. So uh, they will form these uh, mirror images that non superimposable and uh, part A isomer P and isomer Q they have the identical physical and chemical properties with exceptions two specific properties one of that uh, is the effects on plane polarized light okay this one you learned that in S and uh, state another properties by which they differ uh, this one is in A2 uh, it's about the biological activity uh, which means uh, it's the uh, chiral drugs uh, that involve in the uh, specific uh, enantioma. Uh, for example, uh, the drugs that treat TB, uh, so we use a specific enantiomers. Okay, what is the name? Of course, no need to know. Uh, it just we know that with the specific enantioma or the optical isomer, uh, so either it's a positive or negative uh, isomer. Uh, so one of that sometimes is uh, active in the this uh, treatment so it can treat certain disease uh, this is the meanings of biological activities uh, so it's about the chiral drugs part b a solution of pure isomer p and a particular concentration rotates plane polarized light by five degree in the clockwise direction and now describe how a solution of pure isomer Q with the same concentration affects the plane of polarized light. So because they are uh, these uh, optical isomer, so when the P is uh, rotates five degree, Q must rotate with the same magnitude, same degree. It's just the direction different. So since already mentioned for the isomer P is clockwise, then the Q must be anti-clockwise, means different direction. So what you need to say is this, Q will rotate the plane polarized light by 5 degree in anti-clockwise direction. So this is the effects on the plane polarized light. Part C, state another term in addition to stereoisomer uh, or the uh, optical isomer or non-superimpossible mirror images uh, what can we use to describe the pair? Uh, so this is a uh, new names uh, for many of you. Uh, we call enantiomers. It's actually same as all this, right? Enantiomers, a pair of optical isomers. And um, D, give the terms used to describe a mixture containing equal amount of the isomer P and Q. Uh, equal amount means uh, it's 50 50 percent. So when we have a 50-50% or uh, this uh, same uh, percentage or equal amount of this uh, optical isomer, so you need to understand uh, this, this uh, mixture is uh, optically inactive. Why? Because P just now is uh, rotate 5 degree clockwise and the Q will rotate 5 degree anticlockwise, which means when we have the same amount, they will just cancel out. So means uh, it's optically inactive. This mixture, it cannot rotate the plane polarized light. No rotation. And the name for this mixture, we call racemic. So these are the new terms that you must know. Huh? Um, for E, describe one way in which a single pure optical isomer of serine can be produced instead of making a mixture of isomer P and isomer Q. Uh, this part, making a mixture of isomer P and isomer Q is actually referred to uh, one method we call optical resolution. By doing this, uh, the first uh, or the initial state, uh, it will produce the uh, similar amount of P and Q and we need to separate the P and Q isomer. Uh, this we call optical resolution, which is time consuming and wastes a lot of chemicals. Um, so, 
the better way or the faster way that we can get the pure uh, optical isomer uh, is to use the chiral catalyst because when we use a chiral catalyst it can direct the reactants and form the specific uh, optical isomer okay part f complete table 8.1 uh, to describe the peaks that seen in the proton enema of the this syringe uh, which dissolve in the d2o so this is a terms that you must be careful uh, when the this um, amino acid is dissolved in the D2O, uh, it will undergo proton exchange. So means all the OH and NH here, it will exchange with the D here, D2O. So eventually, it will form the OD, ND, and here is OD. Which means uh, this part, means all these groups, it will not really show uh, any uh, signals or give any peaks. Uh, but I still will explain later uh, what how it looks like uh, in the this uh, proton enamel. Uh, use as many rows as uh, possible, right? In this uh, table 8.1, uh, to answer that. Uh, okay, so this structure. Okay, let's make it uh, this way. I already draw uh, this this uh, display formula uh, for the this uh, amino acid uh, for the better explanation. So in this uh, amino acid, okay, we will focus on the normal uh, proton, means uh, the protons that are not uh, with the oxygens and nitrogens, uh, because uh, these signals means uh, this OH uh, or this NH and this uh, COOH, these signals it will not really appear, uh, but I will discuss later uh, how it's formed. Now we focus on the normal uh, signals. So in this uh, Proton NMR, most likely we will see uh, the peaks from this proton and the peaks from this proton. Okay, so that's why in the mark scheme you just see these uh, two answer, right? Not this, not this three. But I still will discuss later. Uh, okay, how this uh, N proton NMR looks like then? So uh, let's start from this uh, uh, CH2. So the CH2 here. Uh, is as one group, it will couple with the uh, protons on neighboring carbon. So the only protons on neighboring carbon is this one. So means this one as one group, now it will couple with this proton. So means one plus one, you see two peaks there. Uh, so means a doublet. Uh, and for this um, another proton uh, so this proton this proton will now couple with these two proton okay this one as one and now couple with these two proton so it's one plus two is three so you see a triplet step okay, something like this so you see a, a peak or a signal with this a triplet so this is uh, how it looks like and you need to explain uh, in the table just now okay so let's move back here uh, this is the standard answer um okay so let's start with the ch2 like i told you just now the doublets okay the ch2 uh, so just now i told you the splitting pattern is doublet doublets are uh, and why is form this uh, splitting pattern? Uh, it just because there there is a uh, one proton on neighboring carbon. Okay, let's move back and see uh, the CH two. Okay, it just because the neighboring carbon here there, there is one proton. Okay, so means one coupled with this one proton, so you get a doublet. Uh, that's the explanation. Uh. Um, so now for the CH here. Uh, so I told you just now it's a triplet. So why is formed this uh, splitting pattern? Because there are two hydrogen atom on the neighboring carbon. Again, uh, so this CH, okay, why is formed triplets? Because there are two hydrogen or protons on the neighboring carbon. Okay, this proton coupled with these two protons form triplets. Okay, that's your explanation. Uh. 
Okay, and again, uh, for the just now the OH and the NH and the COOH, uh, all these it will not really appear again. Uh, this, all these uh, because this amino acid now is dissolved in the D2O, so you cannot see all the signals here. These three, uh, these three signals, this, this, and this. Okay, how about when uh, the solvent is not the D2O? It's just a normal uh, deuterated uh, solvent, like CdCl3. Okay, if it's not really the D2O, uh, so we can see the uh, these three peaks or these three signals. Okay, so how it looks like? Uh, so for this OH, uh, it will form a singlet because uh, is there is uh, no significant spin-spin uh, coupling. Uh, between this proton and this uh, proton so it will form singlets for this uh, NH2 this one also it will form a singlet uh, there is no significant spin spin coupling as well for this uh, COOH this proton also it will be a singlet uh, no significant spin spin coupling so means these three peaks will be singlet so you just need to explain like that. If let's say again, if let's say the solvent is a normal uh, solvent, deuterated solvent, uh, it's not D two O. Okay, with D two O, this three is not there. Now, okay, if let's say a normal uh, this uh, deuterated solvent, so you see this uh, O H. Okay, it's a singlet. So why is formed singlet? Because the hydrogens or the protons on oxygen, and no significant spin spin coupling. Same as this, NH2, so it's a singlet. Okay, the two hydrogens on ni this nitrogen and no significant spin spin coupling. Same as this COH from singlet. Okay, same explanation. Now, um, part G. So we have another uh, amino acid. Okay, so uh, this one, uh, the skeleton formula shown. Uh, it's just us state the numbers of peaks uh, in the carbon uh, 13 NMR. Just now it's proton, now it's carbon 13. So we need to find the non equivalence uh, carbons number. So from this structure, we know that all the carbons here they are non equivalent. So this one is one carbon, two carbon, three, four, five. So five different carbon, five different chemical environments. So it will form five peaks in this uh, carbon 13 uh, NMR. Okay, so the last part, uh, we have the glutamic acid here. Uh, and the uh, isoelectric point of uh, glutamic acid is pH3. Uh, before we uh, uh, go further, uh, at least you need to know the circuit certain concept. Okay, because it's already mentioned isoelectric point is pH3, means at pH3, the glutamic acid will exist as a dipolar ion. Means uh, it will be one charge positive and one charge negative. Later I'll tell you what. And uh, if let's say now the pH is not uh, pH3, uh, if it's lower than pH3, means it's more acidic, what happened? If it's more acidic, then the NH2 will react. More acidic means uh, it has more H+. Plus. So the this NH2 will react and it will gain the H+, plus and form ammonium. If it's more basic means the pH higher than 3, so the COOH group will react and form the carboxylate. Uh, it's something like this. Huh? Uh, if uh, in acidic condition, so the NH2 will react like this, will gain protons and form this ammonium. If in the more basic condition, so the acid group means the COOH will react with the hydroxide and form the carboxylate. So this is a concept means in order to deduce a structure uh, in dif uh, different pH, you need to uh, use this concept. 
Now, uh, a sample of glutamic acid, now it dissolved in a solution of pH 1. A strong alkaline then added until pH of the mixture reached pH 14. So means now it's from the more acidic condition to the more basic condition. Uh, during this process, all possible ionized form of glutamic acid present at different times, depends on the pH. He completes the boxes below show the four different ionized form of glutamic acid that present at the stated pH value. Uh, let's start from this pH 1. pH 1, as compared to the, this, uh, this uh, isoelectric point, uh, of course it's more acidic. I told you already, when more acidic, only this NH2 will react. So the COH no change, only this one will form ammonium. We will gain the proton and form this. So means from this glutamic acid, uh, this one will gain the protons and form this NH3 positive. At this pH3, uh, already told you, this one is the isoelectric point, means it will exist as the dipolar ion. Okay, means the COOH here will release the protons and it will gain by this uh, NH2 to form this uh, uh, NH3 positive. Okay, so this is the dipolar ion. Uh, it's still charge neutral, uh, we can say that, uh, because it's positive negative. Uh, so after that, uh, at pH9, pH9 is uh, more basic now. More basic, again, let's get back to this, uh, this uh, equation. More basic, the COOH will react with the hydroxide from carboxylate. Means, now, the NH2 no change. No change. And the one that change is the COOH. Uh, because pH9 is relatively uh, low, lower than pH 14. Uh, so one of the COOH now is reacts so to form this carboxylate. And the other one, no change. Uh, this is uh, the, the better, better way to answer because there is a sequence here. Uh, actually, it can be both, uh, but the, uh, because there is a pH 14, uh, so here we just put one carboxylate now it's formed. Now at the higher pH means it's now more basic than just now. Then the remaining COOH will react and form the carboxylate. So now it's formed these two carboxylates. Okay, that's all. Thank you.